It was 4.35 a.m. Christchurch slept. Then began the rumbling, growing in intensity, and the world started heaving sideways. Time seemed to stand still as the earth rocked. Those not woken by the noise were soon jolted awake by the quake. The aftershocks rolled on, and today the emotional aftershocks from near-death experiences. Ian Sinclair and the spirit of survival in Christchurch. In the dead of night, a security camera captures the seconds that shook Christchurch to its core. And at first light, the full extent of this quake dawns on the city. Leaving scars emotional as well as physical as the shock sets in. Well, you don't have to travel very far into Christchurch to see the extent of the devastation. Here in St Albans, for example, lies the rubble of a barber shop, a tie takeaway, a dry cleaners, people's livelihoods lying in tatters. Rose Lennon has had her curio shop and cafe in St Albans for four and a half years. It's my business, my livelihood and my dream. A dream swept away in seconds. There's a lot of stock in here that um, people entrusted me to sell for them and, and some of it I can't salvage. And... The building's not safe, it could fall down, but this is her last chance to save what she can. Instead of looters getting in there and getting my stock, I might as well try and get as much as I can out. Yeah, here we are, sort of like scavengers, grabbing as much as we can in a short time frame in case and we had another aftershock and because they reckon there's still lots more aftershocks come and this will probably crumble. And there are incredible stories there? too of survival. Those are the bricks as they were? Those are the bricks. And where was your it, head? My head was right here. Marsha Witteheader counts her blessing. Marsha, doesn't, doesn't it amaze you that, that nobody's died? <laughs> I've been lucky to survive this, this particular impact. You know, I'm aware that there have been a couple of people that have been seriously injured. I'd really like to get my clothes, but that's probably a bit too... too I've got all of these in my personal possessions and pictures out of... Oh. Room with a view. Pictures, it's the only one all that's... your favourite things. Yes. From great helmets. People get very attached to a home, can't you? Indeed. You know, this is unfortunately... I can't obviously walk out with much more because my whole home is destroyed, literally. Um, even right through my kitchen to my bathroom, right down through my living area, it's all gone. How stable is that? That, it, to me, is, um, it's, it's, it's completely not stable. No, Should you be going in there at no, all? No, but it's my life in there. Uh, it's my personal possessions that I've worked so hard for. I'm certainly not the same person after what's happened. It's going to take me a few days to sort of come around and realise the reality of what, what's really happened. And uh, I, I don't, certainly don't like natural disasters and I don't like earthquakes. <laughs> I never want to experience another one again in my life, ever. How are you going to sleep tonight? Um, I'm not. I don't want to sleep. I'm too scared to sleep. I am. I'm scared because I keep hearing that the earthquake's coming back again and I just don't want to have to go through that experience again. Can we get this quickly wrapped up? Because yes, I know come on, Marcia. I'm sorry to hold you off. And, um, yeah, I just don't want to be here when it comes <coughs> again. Just... Stories of survival against amazing odds are repeated across this city. And so you'd actually been out in, in town, had you, shortly before? Julie Stirler braves the risk of aftershocks to show us where she nearly died. It's late, it just started shaking and... This German from Stuttgart figures luck is on her side. I couldn't find the door first. And this is the way? Yeah. Oh, it's working. <laughs> so yeah, I was lying just there. Oh, you were, you were lying, what, where these bricks are? Yeah. Bricks that had tumbled through the ceiling. The bricks mark where your head was? Yep. Yeah. How did you escape that? As soon as it started, I jumped up and ran to the door, and I can't really remember. It's like, it was so fast, and I just I could see the walls like moving, and um, yeah, ran down the stairs when we were walking out of the door, and 
all those bricks on the driveway, smashed the car. And um, I realized, yeah, a few seconds earlier and they would have hit us. So you had two close shaves? Yeah. yeah. This will stay with you for a while, won't it? Yeah. It was an experience I guess we'll never have again and I don't really want to have it again. Do you think we should both get out of here then? Yeah. Okay. Well, we had to get out of there really because the last aftershock was only two hours ago and nobody knows when or if the next one will happen, but that's just the reality for people here in Christchurch on the first night after the quake. And it's the fear of another quake finishing the job on fragile homes that has families trickling into the shelters. This one at Burnside High. Our house is, I don't feel it safe. It's full of cracks, two-storey place, and just, I'm waiting for it to go. So, yeah, we just didn't have anywhere else to go, so we came here. A family of six, Mum Jo, Dad Paul, with Ashley, Caitlin, Kyla and three-year-old Eliza, all traumatised. I woke up in the morning and like, it was shaking a lot and then I pulled the blankets over my bed because Caitlin was in bed with me. All the house was shaking and then all the lights went out and they were going on and off. Do you want to go back to your house? <laughs> no, not really. Why is that? Um, because it's got lots of cracks in it and I don't really feel safe there. They're tired? Yeah, very tired. They've been up since the earthquake this morning and can't get them to sleep. It's, yeah, really hard. <laughs> Stop. And after 15 hours of uncertainty, without sleep and homeless, any kid can take only so much. Caitlin's a bit upset and tense just with everything. She's worried. She's got other family that she hasn't heard from. Where do you think you'll spend tonight? I, at this stage, it's looking like we're going to sleep in the hall. We've just set up a hall with mattresses, so Paul's just going to have a look at that, and if it's suitable, we're going to put the blankets in there and take the kids over and try and settle them down. Some people still may not have their power. Their houses are not really that safe. People may be very frightened and um, experiencing trauma. So they may very well be seeking out somewhere safe to be. And so I should imagine the Welfare Centre, that's where they may present. I understand they've opened up the th a third hall for uh, accommodation arrangement. We've just had an approach to see whether in fact we can uh, delegate some staff across into there. So then there's somebody on duty on the floor to help with that. And this gymnasium is the accommodation of last resort for those who are simply too frightened to spend the night in their own homes. It's nothing fancy, just some gymnasium equipment actually, but it is safe and it's comfortable. And for now, it's home for Joe and the family. Do you think you'd be able to settle down, the kids down all right here, Joe? Oh, I'm hoping, I'm really hoping. I'm quite hyped up, so, yeah. <laughs> At least there's nothing likely to fall over, at least they're safe, huh? Yes, that's the main thing, that's the main thing. And just hopefully they'll um, have a good sleep.